starts right now. Three suspects are now in custody this morning following a chase with DPS troopers on Highway 281. Just ahead, the charges they're facing and why one of those suspects had to go to the hospital. Streets in Fort Lauderdale, Florida are looking like canals with neighborhoods underwater and people trapped. Just ahead, a look at the widespread flooding that has made rescues difficult and dangerous for first responders. Back here at home, much more tranquil weather. Not quite as chilly, a little more humid out there. We'll get a sneak peek at the weekend forecast coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is April 14th. Normally, we begin yeah. with Mike's forecast, but not this morning. No, we have a major incident at I-35 in O'Connor. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yep, guys, never a good sign when I'm in this early, but I want to remind you, pack some patience because you're going to need it here at 35 at O'Connor. Let's get a wider look at Trans Guide. Now, if you've already arrived to your destination. Great. Uh, you may have seen on the trans guy digital overhead signs that there was a major crash reported here at 35 at O'Connor and take that in. That's actually involving an 18 wheeler that was carrying over 80,000 pounds of onions that rear ended a dump truck at a high rate speed. Now this is according to police. We have Katrina Weber who's heading out to the scene, but police say thankfully the driver of that dump truck was taken to an area hospital and is expected to be okay, but the cleanup process could last for a few hours here because again there are thousands of pounds of onions uh, and the cleanup process will then involve detaching the trailer from the rig and hauling both pieces out of the area. Now after this is done we can expect that there will be another cleanup of oil and debris on the roadway so pack that patience and avoid the area here at 35 northbound. Now for those that may be heading out the door this is what we're going to see right now just a bit of a, a delay. It's nothing too drastic just yet but for 430 in the morning that's still pretty lengthy. I 35 northbound near O'Connor Road as a reminder we sent a push alert out that the highway is closed due to this major incident. Now the good news is the driver is okay, but the situation and the cleanup process could take a little while to clear. Again, 35 northbound at O'Connor Road is where that crash has been pinpointed. We're going to have a live update coming up a little bit later on from Katrina Weber, so she'll be able to give us the ground point of what we're seeing out there, but we'll be tracking that very closely throughout the morning, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. All right, yeah, as Mark mentioned, it is a different story this morning. We've got a lot of clouds out there. We have some warmer temperatures. We have more humidity. Temperatures right now, instead of in the 50s and 40s, we are in the mid-60s on average, with the normal high being right at 58 degrees. So instead of being about 5, 6 below normal like we've been the past couple of days, we are about 5, 6 degrees above normal. And these numbers, the dew point temperatures, have also gone up. Remember, they were in the low 50s and 40s yesterday, so the humidity Humidity, as expected, has come back on in here. But not seeing any any uh, fog right now, and thanks due in part to the cloud cover out there is not allowing temperatures to really drop down. But still, there's going to be a patch of fog here or there around the area this morning. Haven't seen any reports of any mist either. Oak is on the moderate side from yesterday's count. Mold and pecan are both low. And throughout the rest of the morning, we are going to keep plenty of clouds around here. Again, a patch of fog. Temperatures may fluctuate a degree or two, but with this higher humidity and the cloud cover, that doesn't allow things to really move all that much. And then later on today, I'm just going for plain old cloudy skies today. If there's a peak of sunshine, great, but I wouldn't count on a bunch of it. A small chance for a shower later on today. Just don't be surprised if you see one. And then also, there's the very small chance for a shower storm tonight. And odds of rain are not great, but if something pops, could be on the strong side. We'll talk about the timing of that next front tomorrow. Still going to be a really hot day tomorrow. But when will the drier air move in and what's in store for Sunday? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Three people are in custody after leading Texas Department of Public Safety troopers on a chase before ramming one of their vehicles. That's according to DPS. Highway 281 was temporarily shut down one mile north of TPC Parkway, and traffic was piling up due to that road closure. Now, it all started about 1.30 p.m. yesterday. This is near South Park Mall. According to DPS Lieutenant Jason Reyes, DPS special agents were doing surveillance in that area when they witnessed three suspects trying to break into multiple vehicles. A marked DPS vehicle tried to pull over the three suspects for a traffic stop at Loop 1604 and Highway 281 North, but the suspects reportedly sped away to avoid arrest. DPS said the suspects then rammed one of their vehicles and troopers fired gunshots in their direction. The suspect's vehicle was hit by gunfire. DPS says all three suspects were apprehended, but one of them was taken to an area hospital with minor injuries. Uh, we know that it is a problem within the San Antonio area and our folks or our DPS special agents were actually, uh, that's what their task force was. We're actually looking for individuals that were breaking into cars. 
None of their identities have been released. DPS tells us they are all facing charges that include evading arrest, burglary of a vehicle, and or aggravated assault. No officers or bystanders were injured. Texas Rangers are leading that investigation. The roadway has since opened. A lot of questions remain this morning after someone shot a man while he was in his own driveway. Happened around 6 last night at a home on South Laredo Street near Brazos and I-10 on San Antonio's west side. Police say two men were sitting in a car in the driveway when they started fighting. That's when one of them shot the other, according to police. The victim was hit in the leg. He's in the hospital and expected to be okay. The suspect is still on the run. And today, the man arrested in connection with the leak of highly classified Pentagon got documents is expected to make his first court appearance. 21-year-old Jack Texera, an airman from Massachusetts, was arrested yesterday in connection with the leak investigation. He will be charged with unauthorized removal of classified national defense information. The case underscores the challenges the U.S. and other governments face in keeping secrets and staying ahead of breaches in an era of omnipresent data. The Federal Aviation Administration is working to make sure space launches cause fewer disruptions for commercial air travel. Typically, the FAA is forced to close a large amount of airspace for hours at a time when space launches are planned. Many launches happen in Florida, which is one of the busiest regions for air travel. The FAA says going forward, when reviewing launch applications, it will favor overnight launches to try to avoid holiday travel periods as well. The FAA says there were a record number of space launches last year, and this year could see double the launches. It's being called one of the once in a thousand years events. The relentless rainfall pounding South Florida is finally letting up today. As ABC's Lionel Moyes reports, the flooding trapped people in their homes and closed a major airport. This morning, streets looking like canals with neighborhoods underwater and people trapped after Broward County, Florida was swamped with one third of its annual rainfall in just seven hours. We were powerless to stop it from flooding in on both doors. More rain fell last night after storms dumped more than two feet on Wednesday, smashing records. I've driven around the city and there's not one area of the city that has not been impacted. And before the roads could even drain or dry, another storm. Fort Lauderdale Airport still closed last night. The tarmac and access roads inundated. This man paddle boarding in his neighborhood in Pembroke Pines, but the high waters were life threatening for others. We're in a swamp buggy about eight feet off the ground and take a look at the water level that we are driving through at this point. We're on our way to a gentleman that is handicapped and unable to make it out of one of these mobile homes. The widespread flooding making rescues difficult and dangerous. Horrible. My car is, it got water all the way almost to the top and I was really scared. Then I came out and I slept over here at my neighbor's house. At one point, more than 600 people were taken to shelters. Rescue crews are doing a grid search in hard hit areas, going home to home to ensure people are safe. A lot of people are still left in the neighborhood, and I'm worried about many of them. And um, it's a it's a absolutely horrific. Schools will be closed again today, but the airport is finally set to reopen. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. 438, 63 degrees. Up next, Wise Bird Center, Zach Collins has a really great comeback story. We're going to hear from Coach Pop on what he's going to be doing next season. Outside with live cam, may not need a coat this morning. 63 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Mike's Friday and weekend forecast is still ahead. <music> 441 Spurs Center Zach Collins is a great comeback story. The 10th overall pick of the 2017 draft nearly, missed nearly two years between 2019 and 2021 due to injuries. Blazers let him go. Spurs signed him in August of 2021, and he's turned into a key piece of the Spurs rebuild. Collins really took off after the Spurs traded Jakob Perto in the early February area and inserted Collins into the starting lineup. So he's playing with abandon now, you know, for a long time, for months. Uh, he's added the three-point shot to his game. Uh, he's balanced better on the post. Uh, he's playing good defense. Uh, you know, it's the... He's, he's made it. He, you know, he's going to be the guy at, at five for us. Uh, and the fact that he can shoot it and that he's gained confidence in it really makes him uh, that much more dangerous. Now, Zach didn't play in the Spurs' final two games because of a cut on his pinky finger that Pop said became infected. 
Your 2022 USL Championship Goalkeeper of the Year, Jordan Farr, named the USL Championship March Player of the Month. The league announced yesterday Farr made 12 saves as San Antonio FC went 2-0-1 in the month. For the season, they're 3-0-2 with 11 points and tie for the best record in the league. Farr is thrilled to win this honor, but really feels it's more of a team award. It really is an honor to receive and to be recognized for an award as a goalkeeper. It's so difficult to, um, to get these types of awards. You're not scoring goals. You can only really affect one part of the game. It's cool. It's cool. But ultimately, like I've always said, as a goalkeeper, you can't win an award if your team doesn't set you up for success. It really is a team award. Um, it, it's a different one because I, I feel like I have been making big saves, which is fantastic. But at the same time, we're not getting pelted every game. And so it's just moments that you know you have to be switched on for. So I'm, I'm excited. Far and SAFC will play Louisville City FC tomorrow night at 6.30. Tampa Bay Rays made history yesterday with their 13th consecutive win to start the season, trailing 3-1, bottom of the fifth. Rays exploded for seven runs to take control of the game. They beat the Red Sox 9-3, improving to 13-0 this season, matching the start of the 1982 Atlanta Braves and the 1987 Milwaukee Brewers. The only longer opening streak was 20-0 by the 1884 St. Louis Maroons of the Union Association. The Rays are now in Toronto for a three-game series. Texas League Baseball, Rough Riders beat the Missions 8-1 last night. Frisco plated four runs in the top of the first and never looked back. The series continues out tonight at Wolf Stadium. It's SFA night, and there's also a Fiesta Medal giveaway for the first 1,000 fans. And I'll be out there tonight. If you see me, say hi. Yeah, it'll be a nice evening. Yeah. Time now, 444 and 63 degrees for now. As the summer travel season approaches, get ready for a lot of travel buddies. Up next, what you need to know about getting the best deals. And welcome back, it's 447. As the summer travel season approaches, travel experts are seeing a huge increase in bookings for international destinations. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, as the summer travel season approaches, what you need to know about getting the best deals. There have already been huge surges in bookings to far-flung destinations in Europe, Asia, South America, and more. Bianca Sainez is heading to Italy with friends this summer, her first international trip since the pandemic. I think that's the most I've ever spent on a flight before, so I'm actually really disappointed. But um, since I've been traveling, I've noticed like the fares have been extremely high. With travel reaching those pre-pandemic levels, there's no sign of the booming pace of sales slowing down. June will likely mark peak prices for domestic travel and July for international destinations. If you're traveling internationally, you need to book now. Prices will really only increase from here on out for summer trips. And coming up at 7 a.m., how to get the most bang for your buck this summer. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Time now is 4.48 and uh, still a Big mess out there at I-35 and O'Connor. Yeah, that yeah. whole side's still shut down, isn't it, Steven? It is. And you know what? If uh, folks in the area are driving with their windows down and they smell something funny, that could be because of the onions that spilt out on the roadway. Let's show you what we have working here at 35 at O'Connor because the northbound lanes are shut down completely, and that's due to a major crash involving an 18-wheeler that was carrying thousands of pounds of onions. Uh, now, good news is that the driver that was involved in this crash is said to be okay, but we're told by police that a uh, the high rated speed may have been the factor here. The driver of that 18 wheeler rear ended a dump truck. Uh, both drivers, again, good news here, are expected to be okay, but the cleanup process is expected to last several hours. And again, that is because we have thousands of onions that have spilt out there on the highway at 35 northbound at O'Connor. So the cleanup process will take some time, pack some patience this morning. Now, the overall look at the map is not a bad start. This is pretty normal, but where we're seeing that buildup is in the northbound lanes, right as you approach O'Connor road. So for anyone that has a, maybe travel plans up a uh, 35 a little bit later this morning, this is going to cause some delays for you. you can see that big buildup out there. And if you are still traveling to your destination or have you already arrived, pardon me, you may have already seen it on those trans guide overhead signs that the highway is shut down. So as I mentioned, the cleanup process will take a while. We have Katrina Weber who's heading out there to the scene. We'll hear more from her a little bit later on in the newscast, but uh, definitely a messy situation out there at 35 northbound at O'Connor Mike.
Thank you very much, sir. And uh, yesterday was another just glorious day. Had a couple of clouds move in there later on. And yes, that made for an absolutely beautiful, beautiful sunset last night. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. The past couple of mornings, we've had beautiful sunrises. Uh, not thinking we're going to be seeing that because we've got a lot of clouds out there right now. Temperatures are much milder. You may need a light jacket, but it's nowhere near uh, the past couple of days. Yesterday, we were down in the low 50s here in town, even some upper 40s. It's not the situation this morning. Mid 60s on average, above normal temperatures by, oh, anywhere from 5, 6, 7 degrees. And these numbers have also gone up compared to yesterday. The dew point temperatures have gone up anywhere from, say, 5, 8, 12 degrees and the humidity is going to continue to be on the higher side throughout the rest of today. So not as comfortable and I'm just going for cloudy skies today. There may be, like I said earlier, a peak of sunshine here or there, but I wouldn't really count on too awfully much. A patch of fog is going to be possible this morning, but we do have the cloud cover on top of us and that tends to help prevent far from keeping the fog from really forming up. We'll stay low mid 60s all morning long. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make it up to the mid 70s today at noon and then later on today, 82 for a high temperature, 10% chance a shower or two is going to be possible to pop up around here. Really wouldn't count. Just don't be surprised if there is a shower. Then we get into tonight and that's a different situation. First of all, upstairs in the atmosphere. Remember the past couple of days we had that really dark shade of gray, which meant dry air upstairs. Well, now we got a lot more moisture up there, so that's obviously helping with the cloud cover around here. Here's computer model and going through today again, like I said, I think just basically cloudy skies. If there's a peak of sunshine, fine. One or two little showers are going to be popping up around the area. Then we get into tonight. We've been talking about this the past couple of days where the odds of rain are not great. However, if something does pop tonight because the atmosphere as the day rolls on is going to get very, very volatile. So if something happens to crop up as far as a thunderstorm, it can become strong, potentially severe very easily. And models do have one or two of those storms trying to pop up around here, and that's going to be into the uh, wee hours tomorrow. Now, as far as the humidity, it stays very high all the way through today, tonight, first part of the day tomorrow, then it's kind of a one two process. We're going to have a dry line try and work its way on through here. So by early afternoon, dry lines through the hill country, just barely edging through San Antonio, not our eastern counties yet. Then the front's going to move on through. And as that runs into still some of this humid air off to the east, well off to the east, there could be a shower way off to the east late tomorrow afternoon. So that'll be one of those kind of close calls. But some folks may keep a lot, especially down to the southeast. You're going to stay pretty humid throughout most of the day tomorrow from San Antonio Northwest. We'll enjoy the drier air. 76 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 82. A shower is possible. One or two storms around here tonight. Again, odds of rain are low, but if something pops, could be strong. Then tomorrow we'll start off with cloudy skies, very humid. Dry line's going to make it through here in town right now. Looks like uh, early afternoon, just afternoon. Then the front comes through, so it's going to be really hot prior to that front coming through. 92, then less humid air, slightly cooler. 78 Sunday, Monday look great. Some rain chances middle of next week. Are those? When is that on Thursday? Cascarones. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How cute. It was an Easter blur for a second, wasn't it? It was. I was like, wait a minute. I, I know, forgot about what, Fiesta Fiesta. <laughs> yes. I was like, wait a minute. Didn't we have that? Okay. Good. Got Good Got to it. confirm. Okay. Thank you. Gotcha. Okay. Remember, break overhead the head, not on the head. Yes. 453, yeah. 63 degrees. <laughs> and to the most critically acclaimed comedies of the past five years debut their final seasons this weekend, where you can watch next. Two fan favorite comedy shows are coming to an end, plus Super Mario is set to one up the box office for another weekend. Really, it's what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I'm really sorry. I didn't think it would end up like this. Two of the most critically acclaimed comedies of the past five years debut their final seasons this weekend. HBO's Barry returns Sunday with the first episode of its fourth season. Co-star Stephen Root telling me of his 277 credits on IMDb, he's been a part of three great shows. Uh, and one was news radio in the 90s with our, our, our buddy Phil Hartman um, doing Mike Judge's King of the Hill for a long run. 
and this show. And out today, it's the first three episodes of the final season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Amazon Prime Video. It's showtime! I talked to creators Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan Palladino about not wanting to overstay their welcome. Yeah, a lot of shows go past their expiration dates, and I think fans always know that. You know, if they love the show, they know that they're kind of being played, and we, we're, we're, if you're careful you're trying not to ever do that to your beloved audience both barry and mazel have been nominated for outstanding comedy series at the emmys for every season they've been on the air with mazel winning in its first season come on mario our big adventure begins now ah, get it up get it up get it up the super mario brothers movie expected to have a super second weekend on top of the box office it should easily finish first again with forecasts showing it'll earn more than 50 million dollars in north america this despite six new movies opening wide including Nicolas cage's vampire comedy renfield and speaking of vampires buffy the vampire slayer star sarah michelle geller is 46 today while grammy nominated rapper de brat is 49 and that's what's happening in hollywood i'm jason athens and abc news los angeles and the time now is 4.58 and 63 degrees for now. Our big story this morning remains on the roads. A big rig overturned full of onions, 35 at O'Connor. Katrina Weber is on the scene. We're hoping to check in with her coming up in our next half hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Developing now, an 80,000-pound 18-wheeler carrying a full load of onions crashes on I-35 near O'Connor. Stephen Cavazos is monitoring the situation here in the studio. We'll check in with him just ahead, along with a live report from our Katrina Weber at the scene. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Authorities have arrested a suspect in connection to the trove of leaked classified U.S. documents online. How he's expected in court today, the latest coming up. And let's look out there with a live cam, kind of, you know, significantly different from yesterday morning. We're humid at 63 degrees, and we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your Friday. And a good morning to you. It is Friday, April 14th. That's right. Happy Friday. Hope you had a wonderful week. The days have been beautiful, so okay, we can handle a morning of humidity. That's right. We'll talk to Mike in one second. I think we're beginning again, yet again, yes. because of our top story. And Stephen Cavazos is standing by with an update on the situation at 35 and O'Connor. Guys, we can expect this to continue for a little while longer. Uh, we know that there were no injuries reported in this incident, but let's talk about what we're seeing here uh, on Transcap. We have not received any reports of any serious injuries. Uh, we'll talk to Katrina Weber in just a moment, but you can again see that the highway still remains shut down where we do have an 18 wheeler that was involved in a crash that happened a little bit earlier this morning. Now that 18 wheeler was carrying thousands of pounds of onions, so the cleanup process is well underway. Uh, unfortunately, uh, right now our friends at Transguide, uh, this is the best shot we're able to get at this point, but I'll give them a call to see if we can get a different scope of the situation. But as we get, take you to our map, what we really are starting to see at this hour is a pretty significant buildup there in the northbound lanes of I-35 as you approach O'Connor Road. Remember that highway is shut down and it's expected to be that way for the next several hours. Uh, now, as we mentioned, Katrina Weber is live there now. Katrina, how is the scene unfolding? Well, uh, Stephen, a lot of traffic, as you mentioned, both on the highway and here on the access road. Let me just show you. It goes back uh, for quite a ways, just uh, traffic here on the access road. And it's still early yet. This isn't even the bulk of the traffic that we're going to see this morning. But this is from that accident, which happened a little bit after two o'clock this morning. Let me give you a look at what's going on down on the highway. This is down below us. We have video to show you. Uh, again, police tell us it involved an 18 wheeler loaded with onions and a dump truck. The 18 wheeler, they say, rear ending the dump truck, uh, spilling the onions all over the highway thousands of pounds that now have to be cleaned up and offloaded from uh, whatever is left on the truck. They're also going to have to uncouple that truck and then haul it off and clean up whatever spill there might be as far as fuel or whatever on that road. So this could be closed for quite a while. This is the northbound south side of I-35 near O'Connor. Now traffic diverted onto the access road here, but it seems like once they get past the light at O'Connor, things start to open up. But again, it is still quite a backup that we see here on the access road as they work on the highway down below trying to clean up that mess. Uh, it, the dump truck driver, as far as we know, did go to the hospital uh, to get checked out, at least. The driver of the 18-wheeler that police say uh, was at fault in this accident, well, it seems like he is okay. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you very much, Katrina. Of course, we're going to keep you updated and she's going to be out there all morning long with the very latest on that. All right, it is a whole different story when you step outside this morning. You still might need a light jacket, kind of like Katrina was wearing, but temperatures are about 10 degrees above what they were yesterday at this time overall. And look at that bottom number. We're at 64 right now. That bottom number is at 60, which means that's the dew point, which means the humidity is coming back in here. You notice it when you step outside this morning. Plus, we have plenty of clouds out there. We are going to make it up to 82 later on we hit 81 yesterday excuse me we hit 80 yesterday which is the normal high temperature the aquifer yesterday dropped down four tenths of a foot and the allergens everything did drop down from the previous day's reading oak is moderate and just a little bit of mold and pecan are showing up so we've got lots of clouds out there we've got a lot more moisture loft in the atmosphere you know the past few days we've had just absolutely glorious blue skies out there and as this loops back on through that darker shade of gray that's the really really dry air well, that's being replaced with more moisture Moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. So we've got moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico as well as upstairs from the Pacific Ocean, which means we're going to have just a bunch of clouds today. I'm just going for plain old cloudy skies today. Warmer, cloudy, a patch of fog around the area this morning is possible. Not very likely thanks to that cloud cover out there, but of course it is much more humid this morning and it's going to be staying that way throughout the day. Low 80s, a shower is possible today. One or two just scattered here and there, primarily down to the south. Not a big deal. Most of us aren't going to see any rain. And then tonight, a shower or a thunderstorm is going to be possible. Not very likely, but if something does happen to pop up, could be on the strong side because the atmosphere is going to get really, really volatile later on today and going into tonight. Then we go into the weekend and we're going to start off very humid tomorrow. And it's sort of a, a one two situation with the dry line moving on through here. First, we get that dry air in. That's really going to heat things up. Low 90s here in town tomorrow. Then the front moves on through and that's going to at least get us back down to normal reading. So it's going to be great on Sunday. We'll take a look at next week and a peak sneak peek at the start of Fiesta next Thursday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Another baby is dead as a result of gun violence across the city. She is the second toddler killed this week in a domestic disturb disturbance incident. Now that shooting brought police to the Merida apartments near Loop 410 and Starcrest just before 7 Wednesday night. Officers say a young mother was hurt but survived. Her eight-month-old daughter, though, Rosalinda Martinez, did not. Police are now looking for that baby's father. He was at the apartment when police say an argument with the girl's mother over a gun turned into a struggle, and that's when officers say the gun fired, hitting the mother and child while the father ran off. Neighbors say that they cannot believe how this happened. It floors me to even hear that there was a toddler there. As far as I knew, it was just the single suspect, but I never saw anybody enter or leave. The girl's mother has only been identified as a 21-year-old woman. At last check, she was hospitalized in fair condition. The shooting remains under investigation. Now to the young man arrested in connection with the leak of sensitive U.S. intelligence documents. He worked on a military base in Massachusetts. His arrest and the leak of such wide-ranging classified information is shining a spotlight on the social media platform he is accused of using. As ABC's M1 reports, critics say it has little oversight and has become a breeding ground for extremists. This morning, a 21-year-old IT specialist expected to make his first court appearance today in Boston in connection with the leak of highly classified Pentagon documents. Jack Teixeira facing charges under the Espionage Act. FBI agents in tactical gear converged on his Massachusetts home yesterday. News helicopters first spotted him reading on the back deck. He then emerged with his hands on his head. It feels like a movie. It feels like a movie. Authorities say Teixeira is a member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard, based at Otis Air Force Base, working in the intelligence wing. Yeah, I went to high school with him. Good kid. Not really a whole lot of, I would never have kind of taken him, somebody like that. Federal agents have been looking into the leak of dozens of apparently classified military documents that exposed top secret intelligence about the Ukraine war, U.S. spying on allies, and other top national security issues. We do have stringent guidelines in place. This was a deliberate criminal act, a violation of those guidelines. Hours before Teixeira's arrest, a report in the Washington Post described the alleged leaker as someone posting documents to impress young men in a chat room on the social media platform Discord. The Post interviewed a teen who says he was a member of that chat room. It felt like I was on top of Mount Everest. It felt like I was above everyone else to some degree and that um, 
I, I, would, I would be able to brag to some people that I knew stuff that they didn't. The New York Attorney General's office last year announced it was investigating discord, which is popular among teens, in connection with a racist mass shooting at a Buffalo supermarket. Investigators say the teen gunman detailed his plans weeks earlier on discord. Experts say Discord's lack of content moderation allows conspiracy theories to spread. Discord has said it is cooperating both the Buffalo and the documents leak investigations. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 509, 64 degrees. Easier access to your music. Up next, how Spotify is teaming up with Apple with a new widget. Last year, they were busted for having shark fins in their freezer. And now a longtime <coughs> Chinese restaurant is struggling to keep the doors open following a health inspection that resulted in the suspension of their license. Tim Gerber takes us behind their kitchen door. Let's look out there with a live cam. Humidity snuck its way back into our temperatures and now we're at 64 degrees, but we're maybe looking forward to a nice weekend. We're gonna check in with Mike for those details later on. Five thirteen. health inspectors recently suspended the license of a longtime Chinese restaurant on Broadway, same place that was in the news last year when illegal shark fins were found by state inspectors. And when Tim Gerber stopped by this week, he was invited behind the kitchen door, but was left wondering whether the business was still in business. Van's Chinese seafood restaurant located in the 3200 block of Broadway was forced to shut down following a February inspection. Their big problem, plumbing issues. There was no hot water and a cap was missing from the plumbing that caused a foul odor when the water ran. Small live pests were also seen in the business. The inspector gave them a score of 79 but forced them to close until hot water could be restored. Pest control services were hired and all fees were paid. The restaurant was closed when I stopped by, but someone eventually answered the door. I just wanted to follow up on your recent inspection that you guys had. Tan Yen Wen says he's not the owner, just the chef, but agreed to take us behind the kitchen door. He says they were only shut down for a day. The inspector, they let me open up after I pay for this one. Right. He also said they hired pest control. I already got to show it to the inspector last month. Okay. Yeah, everything I've done, but I don't want to spend more money to, to fix it up now. While the business was allowed to reopen, he said they're no longer in operation. I want to get out of here. I don't want to do it and then everything. I'm too old. So you're closing? I mean, you're not even open anymore. Yeah, we all look only cocoa for my family. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. He says they've been struggling since COVID hit. The business also got hit with a string of negative publicity last year when a state game warden seized more than $25,000 worth of shark fins from the business. After that, it took city health inspectors several attempts to even get inside for an inspection. Records show inspectors tried in June, October, November, and December last year, and again in January and February of this year before finally being allowed inside. Wen said it was just because they haven't been open, but then he also said this. So are you opening at 5.30 on some days? Yeah, some, sometimes the family, sometimes come in. So are they open or not? It seems to depend on the day. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Now, Wynn and two other people associated with the restaurant were charged with several misdemeanors related to the possession of all those shark fins, which you see right there. Case out investigates acts asked Texas Parks and Wildlife for an update on the status of that case. A spokesperson said the investigation is now in the hands of U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Wynn has denied any wrongdoing. We'll keep you updated. The story continues. 516, 64 degrees. Let's look out there with trans guides. Still problems at I-35 and O'Connor with the cleanup. We're going to get the very latest from Stephen Cavazos after the break. Cleaning is the worst. Seriously, there's got to be a better way. So we gave Swiffer a shot. If we don't love it, we get our money back. Spoiler alert, love it. Sweeper's heavy-duty dry cloths grab dust and hair and lock it away. Better than my broom that can push it around. It even gets into hard-to-clean grooves and grout lines. Cool. And Swiffer Duster gets in all those hard-to-reach places, trapping three times more dust. Heck yeah. Switching to Swiffer, totally worth it. Love it or your money back. Oh, 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 oh. Had enough? No. Arthritis. Here. Aspicream arthritis. 
full prescription strength. Reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the Asper Cream. We know this story. The endless quest for your perfect foundation. With Sephora's exclusive Color IQ technology, we'll guide you to a shade you'll love. Come in and discover your match at Sephora. All right, time check. We are approaching 520 and we still have big problems out here at 35 northbound at O'Connor. Let's get a wide look at Transguide. You can see that the cleanup process is well underway following an 18 wheeler crash that was carrying thousands of pounds of onions. Take a look at some of that video from earlier this morning. Now that crash was reported sometime around two. Good news here is guys, pardon me, is that there were no serious injuries reported. We do know that the driver of that 18 wheeler was driving at a high rated speed, according to police. Now that driver from the jump truck was taken to an area hospital and it is expected to be OK. And again, that driver of the 18 wheeler was said to be OK as well. But the cleanup process will be a lengthy one. Uh, we will see that probably take us all the way up until 7 a.m. because first responders have to unload those onions. Then it involves detaching the trailer from the rig and hauling both pieces out there. But this has led to to a significant traffic delay. You see some of that reflected right there on your TV screen and we see it right no, here on our map where we have a huge a buildup right there in the northbound lanes at O'Connor Road. Highway shut down right now, so if you can avoid the area, we sent a push alert out a little bit earlier this morning, so just remember uh, pack your patients or find a different route. But traffic is backed up about two miles at this point to Thousand Oaks Drive, so we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this throughout the morning, but the good news is the overall map is still showing plenty of relief out there for drivers. You can enjoy the roads, but right now 35 at O'Connor may be best to avoid the area because Mike, that cleanup process is going to last uh, at least several hours. Yeah, and you know what's amazing too is just the amount of traffic northbound yeah. this early in the morning yep. when you see that backup like that. Thank you very much, Stephen. Of course, we're going to keep you updated all morning long. Great picture from Yvonne and a little flower popped up called a rain lily. How beautiful. Love that. Thank you very much. Keep sending in those KSAT Connect pictures, please. We love them. All right, we got a lot of clouds out there this morning. It's a whole different uh, situation than what we had the past few mornings with the clear skies and the, the coolish and drier air. We've got temperatures that are now in the mid 60s, so we're about 10 degrees above where we were yesterday. We're about five, six above the normal low temperature and the humidity has come back in. So it's not uh, it's not like wet towel sort of humidity, but when you start to hit 60 and get above that for dew point temperatures. You notice it and you're going to notice it when you step outside later on this morning. Temperatures with the cloud cover out there and all this humidity aren't really going to be moving all that much. We're not seeing any fog right now. I got the mention of a patch of fog, but the, the cloud cover is kind of helping that out because, you know, the past couple of mornings we've had those clear skies that's allowed the heat to continue to escape out in space. That's not the situation this morning. We will make it up into the uh, low to mid 70s late morning and noon and and I'm just going for cloudy skies today. There may be a peak or two of sunshine, but uh, it's going to be definitely at a premium. And then we have a small chance for a couple of showers later on. 82 for a high temperature. Just one or two light little showers here or there. Not a big deal, which is what computer models are indicating. There are a couple little spots popping up late this afternoon. Now, as far as any thunderstorms around here tonight, Models are picking up one or two of them. There's a very small chance for rain. However, if something does get going and this one indicates in portions of the hill country late tonight, they could become very strong, very easily, potentially severe just because the atmosphere is going to be increasingly more and more volatile as we go into late this afternoon as well as tonight. Most everything's going to be out of here. By the wee hours, we'll start off with a lot of clouds and humidity tomorrow. Then we're going to be clearing out quite nicely. And as far as the drier air and the hot air coming in tomorrow, it's going to be sort of a one two situation. Very humid start. Then the dry line moves on in here by early afternoon. The front's not going to be in here as of yet by early afternoon, so that's going to allow temperatures to skyrocket up into the 90s. Then we will get into uh, some drier air and somewhat cooler air as we go on into then late afternoon and tomorrow. Now, folks down to the southeast, it's going to be pretty humid all day long tomorrow, but San Antonio Northwest, you'll enjoy that drier air starting early afternoon, noon, early afternoon. 76 at noon today, cloudy skies, a shower or two, and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 82. Again, one or two showers out there, much more humid. Then we are going to see that small chance for a thunderstorm tonight, but overall then the weekend tomorrow afternoon into Sunday and Monday looks fantastic. We'll be back.
In today's Tech Bites, Apple's promise of more eco-friendly batteries. The company is committing to use 100% recycled cobalt in all its batteries by 2025. Last year, that number was just 25%. Apple is also pledging to increase the use of other recycled materials. Next, an easier way to access Spotify. A new icon will sit right on your iPhone's lock screen so you can launch your music or a podcast without unlocking the phone. You have to be on iOS 16 or later for it to work. And finally, if you see someone with a video game, there is a good chance they are a millennial. A study by entertainment company Fandom found the quote, older generation of gamers spend more time playing than teens and Gen Zers. 52% of millennials listed video games as their top interest. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day, everyone. 527, 64 degrees. The heat is already breaking records across the country, and it's only April. Up next, which states will see temperatures 25 to 35 degrees above average for this time of year. And you've been waiting. It's time. Good news if you're looking to get your hands on a KSAT Fiesta Metal still to come on GMSA. We'll reveal the HEB location where you can get one starting this morning. So keep it right here. We'll share the location a little bit later in our newscast. And a quick look out there with Transguide at I-35 at O'Connor. Still a mess out there. We're going to get an update with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Happening now, here's a look at that 80,000-pound 18-wheeler carrying a load full of onions when it crashed of 35 at O'Connor. We'll get you updated on how it's impacting traffic from Stephen Cavazos, plus a live report from Katrina Weber. Well, it's only mid-April, but some parts of the nation are being greeted with july light conditions. Up next, which parts of the country are already breaking heat records? If you're just now rising and trying to shine, it's 64 degrees. It's not quite as cool as it has been in the past couple of mornings. Good morning, everybody. Congratulations. We made it to Friday. It is April 14th. <laughs> There's just, just, back there. yes. everybody, there's just one big catch this morning, uh, and that's for folks on part of I-35. Yeah, guys, uh, unfortunately, not a great way to start the end of the work week, but the good news here is we know that there were no serious injuries reported in this incident, but it's definitely going to take a while to clear. Check out Transguide right now. We have an 18-wheeler crash that was reported earlier in the morning, and we can expect this scene to continue for maybe the next few hours, and that's because that 18 wheeler that was involved in the crash was carrying thousands of pounds of onions. And so you can imagine it's going to take a while for those uh, first responders to clear things up. Now, again, the good news is no serious injuries were reported. We'll talk to Katrina Weber in just a moment. She's been standing by live with the latest on the traffic situation out there. But let's talk about what we're seeing here. The northbound lanes at I-35 remain shut down near O'Connor Road, and that is because we have that major crash. We have a huge buildup that's been continuing to stretch uh, as the morning has progressed. Check it out now. Back up two miles. Now traffic that is moving through the area is moving at just three miles per hour, so not very fast. We sent a push alert out earlier this morning, so if you are still at home, best thing you could do is download that KSAT mobile app and have the notifications turned, down, uh, turned on because what we'll do is we'll advise you about situations like this. But let's take a look at the travel time in that area. Right now, we're not seeing any big impact in the southbound lanes, which is usually an area where a lot of folks are making their way into the Alamo City. But if you're traveling north, it's a different story there guys 42 minutes uh, on I-35 northbound near that 410 interchange just to get to New Braunfels so you can imagine this is going to impact the commute for anyone traveling north on 35 but we take it back here to Transguide 35 at O'Connor this is the shot we've been showing you throughout the morning but Katrina Weber has been standing by live with the cleanup process that's still underway tap well, good morning. I wish I had better news, uh, something about the, this area clearing up, but that just isn't the case. I'm willing to bet there are a few tears being shed, and not because of the onions on the highway, but because of all this traffic. Look at how backed up this is on the access road of northbound 35 near O'Connor. Now, once they get past this light at O'Connor, it seems like they start moving a little bit better. But uh, all of this is because of what happened earlier this morning. I want to show you the video so you can see down on the highway the situation that they've been dealing with since a little after 2 o'clock. Police tell us that an 18-wheeler that was traveling at a high rate of speed rear-ended a dump truck. The 18-wheeler was loaded with onions, thousands of pounds of onions according to police. Some of those spilled out on the highway, some still in the truck. In order to clean this up, they have to get all of that cargo off the truck, 
pick up what's on the highway, remove, uh, pull the truck apart, and then tow it away and clean up whatever fuel may have spilled. So a lot of work to do on the highway on those northbound lanes of 35 near O'Connor uh, before the situation can clear up. In the meantime, people are being diverted off the highway here onto the access road. And again, that's why you see all of this traffic here. It is going to be this way until further notice. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. All right, step outside this morning. You saw she's wearing a light jacket and may it's a kind of may or may not need one because temperatures are about 10 degrees above where they were yesterday, although it is sort of that dampish kind of cool 64 degrees and we're six above the normal low temperature dew points at 60. So it's on the verge of where you you step outside. You do notice it, the humidity a little bit more and wind is out of the south to southeast and that's just going to continue to pull in all that humidity today and then tonight overnight early tomorrow. So all around the area, very consistent temperatures, thanks to that higher humidity, thanks to the uh, cloud cover out there. And everybody has these numbers, dew points of good 10, maybe 15 degrees above where they were at this time yesterday. We're going to make it up to 76 today at noon. I'm just going for plain old cloudy skies today. I don't really see any. I mean, if there's a peak of sunshine out there, consider yourself lucky, but it's basically just going to be pretty uh, cloudy all day long. A shower or two is possible very few and far between and then a shower or thunderstorm is possible tonight. Again, the odds of rain tonight are very small. However, with the very volatile atmosphere later on this evening, if anything does happen to pop up, it could be strong, potentially severe quite easily. And then we will start to clear on out by midday tomorrow, sooner in the hill country. So we'll salvage the latter part of the day tomorrow and all of Sunday looks fantastic. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you. There's an early taste of summer hovering over the Midwest and the Northeast. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, some states could see record-setting temperatures as much as 30 degrees above normal. It's only mid-April, but some parts of the nation are being greeted with July-like conditions. Kind of forget that Rhode Islanders, on a nice day, skip everything and come to the beach. And But today is the perfect day for that to do. The National Weather Service says some states will see temperatures 25 to 35 degrees above average for this time of year, and forecasters say nearly 90 daily heat records are predicted to be broken by Thursday and Friday, mainly across the Midwest and Northeast. Excuse to get out and enjoy the natural beauty of the, of the, of the earth and the water. Numerous heat highs were reported Thursday, including Boston and Hartford, Connecticut, where both cities beat daily records set in 1977. Providence, Rhode Island, topped its previous record from 1945. We biked here from our house down the street yep. because we knew parking was going to be horrible because <laughs> um, there's a lot of college students from here because since everyone lives in Narragansett, but I don't think it's too crowded. I think this is pretty normal. And although the sun was hot, some beachgoers in the Northeast are staying on the sand, at least for now. Tried to go in the water. It's a little cold, but we might jump in Freezing. like that guy because <laughs> he seems to be having a blast. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, the company Boeing, which has a large presence at Port San Antonio, says that a manufacturing issue with some of its 737 MAX aircraft is not an immediate safety concern. The company says a supplier used a, quote, non-standard manufacturing process during the installation of two fittings in the rear fuselage. The Federal Aviation Administration verified the safety assessment and is working along with Boeing to conduct inspections and flights will continue uninterrupted. The new MAX aircraft are already under greater scrutiny following two deadly crashes. Boeing did not specify how many aircraft were affected, only calling it a, quote, significant number. The Florida legislature has approved a bill to ban abortions after six weeks of pregnancy, and Republican Governor Ron DeSantis has signed it into law. The six-week ban will give DeSantis a key political victory among Republican primary voters as he prepares to launch an expected presidential candidacy. The policy will also have wider implications for abortion access throughout the South, as some nearby states have total bans in place. Florida previously prohibited abortions after 15 weeks. Police in Pennsylvania are looking for someone who stole at least $100,000 worth of dimes from a tractor trailer parked overnight at a Walmart. Police were called to the Philadelphia Walmart after they say someone used bolt cutters to break into the trailer. While getting away with the haul, they dropped a good amount of dimes throughout the parking lot. It took crews hours to clean up the mess. 
with $750,000 worth of dimes in that truck. There were perhaps more than 7 million coins to clean up. Are you doing the math here? I mean, this is an unbelievable story. It's odd to have that much money in dimes. Uh, how in much dimes. room would there be left in the cab for the driver? <laughs> and Not much. Ah, I can't figure the rest out. 539, 64 degrees. The United Way is collecting everyday necessities, necessities, excuse me, like toothbrushes and toothpaste to help vulnerable people in our area. Coming up next, how you can get involved. Friday morning, still very early outside with live cam looking towards downtown San Antonio as we get ready to start a beautiful spring weekend here in South Texas. We'll get an update on that chance of storms that Mike was talking about coming up. Welcome back, 542 on your Friday morning. Community advocates at United Way are collecting everyday necessities like toothbrushes and toothpaste to help vulnerable people in our area. Our Alyssa Cole joins us live to give us more background about the project. Good morning, Alyssa. And this has become a popular campaign. Morning. Over good the years. morning, Mark Stephanie. Yes. Hey, good, morning. good morning. How are you all doing? Great. Good. <laughs> That's good. wonderful. Yes, we're learning this shoebox project filled with toiletry items has had a major impact in our community for nine years. The United Way of San Antonio and Bear County has already kicked off this campaign, and it runs through May 26. Now, this project directly impacts children, elders people, veterans, and the homeless. For the next six weeks, they are inviting the community to decorate shoe boxes like the ones you see in your screen filled with lotion, hair combs, sanitary napkin wipes, all those necessary items for people who may face challenges, challenges purchasing these items while addressing other financial hardships or life hardships. A lot of the items that we take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis are items that a lot of these populations among our community have a challenge obtaining. And so those can become a barrier to things like self-confidence. Um, you know, a lot of these populations at times have a uh, challenge accessing water um, and things like that. And so that can add to the challenge. Yes, this year officials say their goal is to collect and deliver 10,000 shoe boxes. That's double compared to when they first started this campaign nine years ago. And they modeled this initiative from the success of their Atlanta office back then. Now you can team up with your school, church, family, neighbors to put these shoe boxes together, or you can just donate the items at United Way or over at the San Antonio Food Bank. And hey, if you don't have time for either, there are other ways to give. All those details are listed on our website under our KSAT community. Community tab. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, ma'am. 544, 64 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide again. Still back up there at I-35, 1,000 Oaks. From this shot, it looks a little better, but I think we're looking at the other side. We're going to get a check-in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Time check, 547. Let's get a look here, this time at 35 at Thousand Oaks. Now, while things are moving okay in the southbound lanes, can't say the same for the mm -hmm. northbound lanes where we have a huge backup. And remember, that is because we have that 18-wheeler crash that was reported earlier this morning. Check out some of the video. We've been showing it to you all morning long. Just pretty stunning stuff there. You can see that first responders are out there on the highway working to clear all of this up. Now, remember, this crash was reported sometime around 2 this morning, and we see that the cleanup process is still underway, and it's led to huge backups. And that's that is because we have an 18 wheeler that was involved in that crash carrying thousands of pounds of onions. You see it right there on the screen, so we can expect that cleanup to continue well uh, up to 7 a.m. according to first responders. Now, the good news here is, guys, the driver of that 18 wheeler is expected to be okay, but he rear ended a dump truck, and uh, the driver of that truck was taken to the hospital, but is also expected to be okay. But traffic right now is not looking too good. Let's get you to the map and show you what's happening over here. 35 northbound. Again, remember that highway is shut down. Traffic is backed up to that 410 interchange, which is why we saw more of that buildup on that Thousand Oaks shot. Uh, highways closed for right now. We're probably going to see that cleanup process take us all the way up until 7 a.m. So pack some patience. If you plan on traveling to New Braunfels, let's check out some of those travel times right now because it's going to take you well over an hour to get there from 410 uh, on the northbound lane. So you could see it's uh, not looking good right now. And Mike had mentioned this a little bit earlier, just looking at the amount of traffic at 430 in the morning. It's pretty remarkable, but the commute is very busy right now. So pack patience again. This is a different shot at 35 at Thousand Oaks where you can see a lot of that backup is taking place in the northbound lanes. 
due to the crash uh, that was reported near uh, O'Connor Road, but we'll be watching it very closely. All right, thank you, Stephen, and thank yep. you to everybody over at Transcap. Yeah, yes. special shout out. So yes. maybe 281 1604 go over, 10 1604 kind of. Yeah, we're going to have that. to look at some solutions. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, take a look at this picture, and this says Washington State and some beautiful cherry blossoms. I didn't realize, I know Washington, D.C. is famous for the cherry blossoms. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. Washington State is as well. Yeah, those don't look like the ones in D.C. They're Beautiful fun. picture, though. Cute. Mm -hmm. And Banner's enjoying his day out. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've got plenty of clouds around here this morning. Different situation than the past couple of mornings. We've had the past few days winds primarily out of the northeast, and that's kept things on the drier side. But now the wind has shifted around. It's not overly breezy out there, but out of the southeast. So that's pulling in more of the humidity, and that's helping out with the cloud cover, warmer air, low 60s. We stay steady throughout the rest of the morning, and I think just cloudy skies all day long. I don't even see a, a peak of sunshine out there maybe one or two of them but don't count on a bunch of sunshine like the past few days we will make it up in the mid 70s at noon 82 high temperature today a shower or two is going to be possible later on this afternoon and then going into tonight a very small chance here's the chance for a couple of showers later on this afternoon and then tonight we're going to see a couple of storms try and pop up rain chances are very small however the atmosphere becomes very, very volatile, and if anything does pop up, it could be strong to potentially severe. So we'll have to watch out for some of these showers, and especially out to the west. This is going to be tonight and going into the wee hours tomorrow morning. Most everything should be out of here then as far as any rain by early tomorrow, perhaps a little bit of early morning mist around just because of the, the extra humidity that's going to continue to get pumped on in here. Then things will begin to clear out by later on in the afternoon. Humidity continues to go up throughout the day today, as well as overnight, helping to destabilize and make the atmosphere that much more volatile. Now, the dry line initially is going to come through, obviously, in the hill country. First of all, you'll enjoy a lot more dry air throughout most of the day tomorrow. It comes through here in town and sort of just kind of puts on the brakes a little bit. So over around Gonzales, you'll still have plenty of humidity. It'll drop down here. Then the front's going to move through, and as that moves through, Later on in the late afternoon, there could actually be a shower well off to the east, but that dry air and then cooler air is going to continue to push on in here as we go on into then the rest of uh, Saturday as well as then Sunday. And that means Sunday, Saturday is going to be very, very hot. Sunday, much cooler. Now, jump ahead. Tuesday. Chance for a couple of showers around here. Those are going to linger into Wednesday. Now, this is a long range model, kind of a broad brush that's painted in. So it's not going to rain everywhere constantly, but there are rain chances then Tuesday, Wednesday, and maybe even a couple of uh, rain chances around here on Thursday. Again, small chance as of right now, but there is that chance. And I know Thursday is the beginning of uh, Fiesta, so hopefully, uh, maybe Mother Nature. We give her a couple of Fiesta medals. We'll hold off on the rain for Thursday. 76 degrees today at noon. Cloudy skies. High temperature today. 82. A shower or two is possible. Not very likely at all. And then tonight, a shower, a thunderstorm or two. Not very likely. Rain chances small, but uh, if anything does pop up, it could be strong to severe. Humid start tomorrow. We dry out, heat up, and then cool back down to the mids to the upper 70s for Sunday, Monday. Rain chances midweek. Very pleasant next week overall. Yeah, the first part of the week is going to be great. Thank you, Mike. Time check 552, 64 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, four, one, five, fireball four, daily four, five, nine, three, seven, fireball nine. And your cash five numbers, three, six, 14, 1734, Texas two step, eight, 20, 23, 26, the bonus ball of 23. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the state of emergency in Florida. Around Fort Lauderdale, historic rain, more than 25 inches confirmed, which is their greatest in 24 hours ever on record. Uh, the first responders were answering hundreds of calls. Victor Akendo is there for us, and I'll track where the storms move next. We're also tracking the angles after the suspected leaker of hundreds of top secret documents was taken into custody. The Pentagon now facing scrutiny about why he has access to such closely guarded secrets as the suspect faces is a federal judge today. Plus parenting advice from those girl dads, the Jonas Brothers, and the right stuff for stylish jeans. Plus a performance by the Broadway cast of New York, New York, right here in Times Square.
If you're looking to snag a 2023 Case Half Fiesta medal, our giveaways have already started and run through April 27th. Today's the day you can get a free medal. You'll need to tune into Case Hat to find out where the giveaway is each and every day. We're going to reveal today's location coming up at 645, so a little less than an hour. You can find the full list of medals right now on ksat.com. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, the 11th Annual San Antonio Book Festival kicks off tomorrow. RJ Marquez will tell us everything you need to know if you plan on attending. Plus, in this week's segment of Gardening with KSAT, Sarah Costa tells us the benefits gardening can have on your mental health, which is so important. And Transguide right now, Steve has been tracking this all morning long. It is an absolute mess. On one side of I-35 at Thousand Oaks, due to that big rig that overturned full of onions, the cleanup continues. We'll be right back.